is another quick one on fiber effects worth noting. Say this is our model. In this case, it's just a simple spline. Under a new layer, we're gonna create a new two point polychain. It doesn't matter how deep it is on this, but we'll give it lots of points. So it's a nice smooth fiber. The important thing though, is that its base is at the origin. So we'll do that rest on ground along the Z. Let's save this and get it into layout. We have our modeled spline and a two point polychain now in layout. We don't need to see the model, so we'll turn that off. The layer that I've labeled fiber effects, let's add fiber effects to. So under the uh, effects tool, fiber effects, activate that, turn the OpenGL on, make it a little thicker and remove some of its kinkiness. I want to be scaling this from zero that way. And then when it gets to the end, I want to scale from this point that way. So I've got two pivot points effectively. Now there are numerous ways we could go about this, but I'm going to show you two approaches in layout. So the first one with our fiber effects spline selected, let's throw a bone on it. Equals key, add a bone, R to rest. Let's go to stretch and put zero in at this frame. Let's get a frame, I don't know, frame 40 for now and one there. Let's give it some easing. So F2 on the keyboard to bring up the graph editor. Select those two, F1, drag right. That's good, let's hide the bone. We don't need to see it for now. That's one method, let's deal with the other end. Let's disable the bone and we're gonna use nodal displacement for this. So let's turn that on. We're gonna need a couple of nodes here, quite simple. So we're gonna go for a mesh part, a stretch, make vector and a scalar. Or is it scalar? Who knows? Over in the displacement node, double click. From mode, we're gonna change it to set. Okay, that, stretch into there. Make vector, this is gonna be our stretching. So you'll see it disappears there. So we want one. Let's just keep it undeformed for now. So one, one, one. The scalar node will control the scaling factor. So we want it to begin at one and then we want it to go to zero. So we'll do that quickly. Plug the scalar into the Z because that's what we're controlling. It's working, but as you can see, it's working in the wrong direction. The pivot point is in the wrong place and this is where mesh part comes into play. So if we were to imagine there is a bounding box around this object, using the part center, part box min and max, we could filter out the pivot points that we needed. So for instance, the part center would be slap in the middle of that. All we need to know for this one is that we want the pivot point at the maximum end. So we're just gonna use the part box max as our effect center. So this is doing exactly what we want it to. Let's turn the bone back on. F2 on the keyboard to bring up the graph editor. Not sure what the undo thing is. Let's just select those two and press X to isolate the channels we need. And as you can see, you can have an overlap between each deformer, so that's handy should we need it. Let's keep this nice and punchy. Nearly there, let's map this fiber to our model. So we've got our fiber flex selected. We're going to use an old modifier called Curve Conform. And we're quite simply going to double click on this. It's automatically detected the length of that two point poly chain and it's on the Z, which is good. Uh, so all we have to do now is literally select the curve of the model. Nearly there, but we need to align it and we also need to stretch it. So that's working nicely, but you can see a little bit of a error right at the beginning and I suspect that's because my bone starts at 000, zero, zero. if I put a 0000 zero, 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 one so it's not quite hitting zero that seems to cure our issue. Let's see what we're doing a bit more clearly we'll change our material to a standard and we'll probably need to flip to VPR and back again for the OpenGL to update. All that remains now is to style our fiber so closing that down let's go back to our fiber fix panel we may want let's say 10 spread out the radius a little width is quite a nice one to have control over if we move it to gradient fiber v sadly we can't animate this that would be extremely handy Something to be wary of, um, because we're using scaling, our points are starting off bunched together at this end and we end up bunched together at the other end. Now, some settings may respond slightly strangely. 
as it does here to that scaling. There is a way around this which we'll address separately, but for simple setups like this, it's uh, worth noting. With a little bit of tweaking and a bit of animation on the clump and the guide radius, in this case, it makes for quite a nice little animation. And obviously all of this is procedural, so tweak away. We'll quickly talk about this other method to get around the uh, distortions we were getting when scaling. So I've got a big complicated looking spline here that wraps around the text. And as in the previous example, this is just a two point polychain along the Z axis that will have fiber effects applied to it wrapped around this spline. As before, our two point polychain has a fiber attached to it so we can see what's going on. Now let's attach that two point polychain to the spline with a couple of changes from the previous example. P for properties and let's put on curve conform. Double click on this. That looks as it would in the previous example. The only difference with this setup is we won't be needing the stretch. Turn off curve conform and add a bone to our object. Press R. We're basically going to be using this curve conform as spline control. So if we now turn curve conform back on, you'll notice it's a little bit broken. That's because we have another setting to tweak. Undo that, back into curve conform. Now the thing about curve conform is it doesn't have any pre or post behavior when you pass these points. So if I were to go back, for instance, I get a funny distortion. If I were to go over, again, I get another distortion. So what the trick is here is to kind of guess what the, uh, the length of the spline is, not the two point polychain. So I'm just gonna guess at 60 meters here. Now what I'll find is if I move my bone forward, we should now conform to that spline. Now you see, I've got distortion. It's because that 60 meter value is basically too short. So if I let's put in 80. Yeah, in fact, it's disappearing for us. So I can now animate this bone from zero to avoid that distortion there. And let's move it all the way to the end, to the point it disappears. Just about there, well, it should be off screen anyway. So if we to now play the animation through, there's our spline. So that was nice and quick. And as before, fiber effects gives us lots of procedural things to experiment with. And these styling options should also behave slightly more forgiving than the scaling we tried earlier. Still a little bit jumpy, so you're gonna to have to be careful. Probably the speed it's going at doesn't help, <laughs> uh, but uh, you get the general idea. Obviously it's all, it's all animatable. So again, play around until you find something you're happy with.